Now, we operate largely in the realm of entrepreneurs, and we train people how to be entrepreneurs, how to be effective entrepreneurs. In fact, I've been in the professional corporate training world for the last 23 years in the business world, training people in sales, leadership, customer service, and organizational development. So if you want to get on the good foot of um, prosperity and the good foot of growth and development, you're in the right place. All right, so 40 days of success. But first of all, let's take a look at a couple of meditations. You said, why a meditation? When I say a meditation, I'm just talking about you being still and knowing that he's God and quieting yourself. And one of the best ways to do that is by making positive affirmations. So let's make these affirmations. First of all, if you're in a place where you can close your eyes, just close your eyes and get still. All right, make this affirmation after me. I am creating success and prosperity through the spoken word. Say it again. I am creating success and prosperity through the spoken word. Now say this. I'm living a life filled with success, happiness, and joy. I am living a life filled with success, happiness, and joy. Now say this. I'm creating a life of true joy and prosperity. I am creating a life of true joy and prosperity. Finally, say this. I greet each day with gratitude, hope, and positivity. I greet each day with gratitude, hope, and positivity. Now, that's very important. They're, they're all very important. But particularly that last one is extremely important. All right. So now. Let's talk some about 40 days of success. Joshua chapter one, verse eight from the NIV. Thank you again for joining me. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So notice that the Bible teaches we are to be prosperous and successful. A little background on this uh, thought and this concept. First of all, 40 Days of Success, again, is a training manual I have put together. And you can go to my website, which is Prevailing Word Now. Click on the um, tab that says the BS or the Bernard Smalls Library. <laughs> You said, the BS library, what kind of library is that? You got some bull going on. <laughs> the Bernard Smalls Library. And scroll down and you'll see the depiction for 40 Days of Success and the manual. In fact, I encourage you to enroll in the program. As I speak, we're in the process of enhancing it greatly. And if you enroll now, any enhancement, we will get to you. One thing we're doing is making it a full audio program where we will have the audio embedded in each of the PDF pages on each day of lesson. So you get to hear yours truly, talk about the day, you read about the day, and you get to act on the practices. 40 Days of Success is training, not just teaching. Well, what's, what's the difference? Teaching is telling, while training is showing. And this is something that we really need to understand. Uh, the difference between teaching and training is this. If I teach you something, you know it. If I train you in something, you know how to do it. And many are taught, but not trained. In fact, that's one of the biggest problems with, uh, with church and life and colleges. We teach people, we get them a boatload of information, but we don't train them how to walk in it. This is why mentorship has become so important because people have realized that in order to be successful, you need mentors. Okay, we're talking about Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse eight. Do you know that Moses mentored 
Joshua. Joshua was mentored by Moses. That's one reason he was so successful. You could say Joshua was trained by Moses. Okay, Moses is up there getting the Ten Commandments, 40 days and 40 nights. Where's Joshua? <laughs> He's hanging in there as close as he can. Of course, he couldn't go all the way up, but he went as far as he could. But he was being trained by Moses. So you could say training is what you can do as a result of teaching. Now, you may be taught something and you may know it. You may know it um, physically. You may know it intellectually. But are you trained in it? Meaning, can you do it? See, when you get through with training, it's not just what you know, but it's what you can do. So I could say a lot more about it, but the reason we laid it out in 40 days is it takes time. Training is done over time. You can go get a lesson. You can go sit in church for 20 minutes and get a teaching, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, however long your preacher preaches. <laughs> By the way, we don't go very long here. But there's a vast difference between being taught and trained. Taught and trained. If someone said to you, I'm going to take a sex education class. Of course, that's teaching about sex, about sex, sex, <laughs> success. You got success and success. <laughs> you be nice here, Bernard. Okay, just just being silly. But you were taught about sex. But it, suppose you go back to the class and the guy said, next week we're going to engage in some sexual training. <laughs> you might say, I don't know if I want to visit that class. Or you might say, I want to visit that class. <laughs> okay, we have fun here. We keep it clean, but we have fun. Uh, because the training would be engagement, involvement. A police officer that's trained to use a weapon isn't just taught. It's not just intellectual, scholastical teaching. It's training. Okay, so the difference is teaching is telling, training is showing. It's like the scripture that comes to mind that says, um, train up a child in the way that he should go. And even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Notice it didn't say teach up a child, but it said train up a child. Well, what's the difference? We're saying that there's a vast difference between teaching and training. All right. So let's go back. Joshua 1.8. Hope you're enjoying this. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, I want to talk to you about one thought tonight, and that thought is what we call the law of mental acceptance. Now, the law of mental acceptance is a very interesting uh, concept. And mental acceptance basically means this. You can have anything that you can mentally accept. Say after me, I can have anything that I can mentally accept. Now, here's the reason. It's a biblical principle. Jesus said, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. But you must mentally accept it first. If you do not mentally accept it, you don't get it. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So now let's take a look at an illustration of the law of mental acceptance. In the Old Testament, uh, God had told Moses to lead his people, um, you know, into the land, uh, out of the, the um, Egypt, into the land. So in the process of this, as they were transitioning, um, God told Moses to have the spies go check out the land. So the spies went checked out the land and came back with a report concerning what they saw in the land that we know as the promised land. Well, I believe God wanted them to come back with good news about the good things they saw in the land. But what did they come back saying? Well, 12 guys went there. By the way, they went for 40 days, 40 days of success. They, uh, went into the land and they came back. And as soon as they got back, 10 of the spies started complaining about the giants 
about the valleys, about the hills, about how big and vast the land was. And they even said, we are grasshoppers in our sight. And so are we in their sight. They say, we are grasshoppers in the sight of the enemy. Well, they did not mentally accept the fact that they could take the land. Would you agree with that? Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, came back saying, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able. Now, Joshua and Caleb, after mentally accepting the fact that they could take the land, were threatened even by the um the other spies, they started saying things, we cannot, we're not able. <laughs> and and um, I mean, they just about wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb for mentally accepting the fact that they could take the land. Now in Numbers 13, the book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, thank you again for joining me. It says, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Notice, we are well able. Would you say that Caleb operated in the law of mental acceptance? I believe he did. Why? He said, we are well able to possess it. We are well able to overcome it. Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able. And if you read into chapter 14, you find Joshua and Caleb pleading with these guys that we can take the land. Well, who operated in the law of mental acceptance? I would say Joshua and Caleb did. Well, what about the other guys? Well, <laughs> that's another story called doubt. Now, I like this depiction because um, Proverbs, what it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Actually, you could say as he thinks in his subconscious his subconscious mind, so is he. So if you look at this depiction of the iceberg made famous by Sigmund Freud, 10% of your mind is your conscious mind, which involves willpower, analysis, decisions, and so on. 90% of your mind is what? Subconscious. So that means 90% of the mind is below the level of consciousness. Now, subconscious simply means below consciousness. It's actually your BS or your belief system. Your subconscious mind is your belief system. So what do you have in your beliefs? What do you have in your values? What do you have in your emotions? What do you have in your habits? What do you have in your imagination? What do you have in your intuition? That's what's important. <laughs> and that's what's making a difference in your life. Now, so what do you do? What do we do here? First of all, we must understand that we must mentally accept good if we're going to have good. Say after me, I must mentally accept good if I'm going to have good. Well, how do you mentally accept good? Four, four things that uh, I believe you need to understand, and then we'll give you some action steps and we'll wrap this up. Number one, remember that negative minds doubt. Positive minds believe. Say so negative minds doubt. So when you're in doubt and you're believing that you cannot possess the land, you cannot mentally accept the promise or the promises, you're in doubt. Number two, negativity belittles things he wants. The negative person belittles things he wants. And here's the reason. Negativity leads to doubt. And doubt says you're not going to get it anyway. So you might as well put it down like saying, I didn't want it anyhow. <laughs> All right. Number three, negativity rejects good. By the way, you must reject good because good never rejects you. God is good, and he doesn't want you to suffer with poverty, lack, sickness, and disease. But if you reject good, you're not going to have good because you're not mentally accepted or accepting the good. But remember that the good never rejects you. The fourth thought is positive minds accept good now. 
It's after me, positive minds accept good now. So here are four action steps. We'll give you these action step steps and then we'll summarize and we'll go home. Number one, learn the power of thought. Learn the power of thought. Start to study the power of thought. Start to get insight into the power of thought. The power of right thinking, the power of positive thinking. Learn the power of thought. Secondly, continually think God's thoughts. Practice po positivity by thinking God's thoughts. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. But is God positive or negative? Well, God says in the Bible, there's a book I have right here, that we're to think on good things. In fact, let's take a look at something. I didn't plan on going there, but let's go to Philippians 4, verse 8 from the Bible. And let me show you that the Bible teaches positive thinking. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and there be any praise, think on these things. So when I say think God's thoughts, we are saying think positive thoughts because God is a positive God. God just said, think on good, positive things. In the Old Testament, I like where he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So we've got to choose to think the thoughts of God, think good thoughts. The fourth, uh, third action, the third action is practice positivity upon awakening. Very important. In fact, psychologists say that when you wake up in the morning, the first five minutes of thinking is what establishes your day because you register your day. So what do you want to learn to do? You want to learn to practice positive thinking when you wake up, especially upon awakening. Like when you wake up in the morning, you might say something like this. I feel happy. I feel healthy. I feel terrific. Come on, say it after me. I feel happy. I feel healthy. I feel terrific. That's one of my favorite affirmations. And number four, let's review quickly. Number one, learn to the power of thought, learn the power of thought. Number two, continually think God's thoughts. Number three, practice positivity upon awakening. And number four, cheers, revise your day with positivity. Revise your day with positivity. Okay, how does this work? Let's say you had a rough day. I like what Les Brown likes to say. He likes to say, it hasn't been a bad day. It's been a character <laughs> building day. <laughs> you ever had a character building day? Excuse me. That's the day when the wheels come off. <laughs> That's the day that you get up out of bed and you want to get back in bed. You know what I mean? You're being negative, Bernard. No, I'm not being negative. You got to realize that um, negativity will try to oppose your positivity. See, we teach positive thinking, but you got to overcome in this life. And that's another thought. But here's how it works. You had negative thoughts. You go to sleep at night. Before you go to sleep, take all the negative and picture the results as positive. Like maybe you had an argument with your wife or your husband. Turn that around and see yourself giving or receiving roses. Maybe you had a disagreement with your boss and you walked out of the office and slammed the door. See yourself going back apologizing or see the meeting ending positively. Maybe you got a bill in the mail from the IRS. Imagine that was a check in the mail. So what we do here is real simple. We revise negativity with positivity. Finally, talk about Bible mental health. Bible mental health is biblical mental health. And I believe that many of the mental health issues we deal with today can be solved by right thinking. 
Philippians 4.8 says this from the ESV. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, look at that. If there's any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. So we're going to think on good things. So make these affirmations after me. I am creating success and prosperity through the spoken word. I am living a life filled with success, happiness, and joy. I am creating a life of true joy and prosperity. I greet each day with gratitude, hope, and positivity. All right, the law of mental acceptance. If you have any questions, here's what I want you to do. Go to my website, which is Prevailing Word Now. Prevailing Word Now. Scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see a tab there that says uh, send a message or, you know, put in your email address. By the way, while you're there, if you want to, you can register. But I'd love for you to submit your questions, and we will answer them in writing. We'll answer them best we can in writing. Any questions you have about anything. While you're there, also, you might browse around and uh, go to the bookstore. You might go to the radio station. And you might even connect with us by putting in a little information on any page. You'll see a little pop-up clicking up, jumping up. One speaks about happiness or another one speaks about you're welcomed, you're invited and various things. Connect with us. But whatever the pop-up says, if you click on it, you can put in your email address and your cell phone number and you will never miss a message from prevailing word. Finally, I want to invite you to give. Go to our website, which is prevailingwordnow.com and go to the Give tab and consider giving. You might even consider setting up systematic giving if you like this teaching. Remember that Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And when you give, you help us to continue to reach out. By the way, we are on TV now in the Atlanta area, and that's Atlanta TV 57, W-A-T-C TV 57, with Motivation with Bernard Smalls, and it's on every Friday morning at uh, 6 a.m. That's in the Atlanta market, so I'd love for you to check us out. Now, finally, how do you get in contact with us? We'll just, we'll just make this a total connectivity wrap-up here. First of all, go to our website, which is prevailingwordnow.com. There you will see a meetings tab. And if you go to the meetings tab, you can join us for our 10.30 a.m. Facebook Live and our Wednesday 7.30 p.m. meeting. We also have a tab there for Church Online. And Church Online is basically church anywhere at any time meaning there's always a message posted there from one of our services. And on Wednesday night and Sunday morning, we have fresh messages we post there. And that's totally online. In fact, you don't even have to be on Facebook. You just go to the link. You just click on, if you just go to the meetings tab and click on church online, it'll take you directly to the portal. I mentioned it earlier, but it bears repetition. I am radio is available at our website. And this is teaching 24 seven. So if you like this teaching and you want more, you don't have to wait until the next Zoom. The good thing now is information is constantly flowing up on demand. You know, it used to be, we had to be at the church at a certain time. Well, the world has changed and we're changing with it and we're positive. We're not changing our ethics or our morality but changing our strategies. So I am radios 24 seven globally. We have many uh, listeners in uh, India, Pakistan, all over the world, uh, Africa, and you can listen here in the US or wherever you are. Finally, prevailing word pavilion in-person meetings. We meet as led 
And we want you to go to our meetings tab and keep your eyes open for our next in-person meeting. We are a hybrid ministry with hybrid meetings. Finally, next Zoom meeting will be here at the same link. And if you're with us on Meetup or Facebook or wherever you followed us, just click on the link and follow through. And that is Saturday, May 25th at 6 p.m. And we'd love to see you there. Finally, my prayer for you as always is this. May God expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled. God bless you. Have a great evening.